welcome everybody to another episode of Rock Movie Reviews. Today, we will be reviewing Jurassic World. I saw this movie in uh, theaters in its opening weekend. I don't know if uh, you did or not. I actually saw it on my birthday at Downtown Disney. It was actually for my 18th birthday. That's right. That's right. And that was that must have been a pretty special experience. Oh, it was. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, I didn't. I forgot to introduce this to my friend Jake. Say hi, Jake. Hello. Um, because Ryan couldn't make it today, uh, Jake is the stand-in. Right? Yeah. But we won't always have Ryan on the show. I'll uh, we'll have multiple people as guests, and it's Jake today. So that's that. Yeah. Um, what did you think of this movie? I actually enjoyed it a lot. I did and as well. I didn't enjoy it as much as the original, but almost as much. Yeah. And it was definitely better than two and three. I'll mm. say that. Yeah, it is. Uh, I think we can both agree it's probably the best sequel, a Jurassic Park sequel. Yeah, it is. Yeah, because it has um, it has it has some of the magic. It was able to bring some of the magic back from the original. Mm. Um, it's a it's a curious thing because after so many how many years since Jurassic Park three and then Jurassic fourteen fourteen years, wow, I'm hearing that correctly. Fourteen years, yeah. that's crazy. That's really crazy. And yep. for them to pull off uh, a fate this large was um, pretty incredible. Oh yeah, in my quite opinions. the risk. Yeah, and with people um, like Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard attached, I was excited mainly for mm -hmm. Chris Pratt, but um, it just looked like a good, you know, this big giant uh, spectacle of a movie. Yeah. So that was really cool. Um, I think we're gonna dive right into the plot here. It's not that complicated of a yeah. plot. It's fairly similar similar to the plot of the original Jurassic Park, just yeah. the amusement park is much bigger. A lot bigger. A lot bigger. There's more people to munch, uh, for the dinosaurs, that is. And, and they have, like, newer experimented dinosaurs. That's true, yeah. And they have they have so many more attractions than just, you know, dinosaurs. They've kind of, you know, they got the Mosasaurus. They kind of turned it into an amuse park, amusement park. Yeah, like a whole actual park. Rather, well, I mean, the first one had a, an amusement park, but it was a little more limiting yeah. and a little more small. This one is on the same island, but it's massive. Yeah. I mean, mainly when you're when you're watching this movie, the whole island has parts of the amusement park that you can go to. Yeah. So, but of course, in any Jurassic Park movie, something goes wrong, and we have a uh, a killer dinosaur on the loose. Oh, yeah. This time around. We have um, what they call the Indominus Rex. Oh, yeah. So, the Indominus Rex, uh, what were your thoughts on that? Um, I actually thought it was quite clever of a dinosaur, making mm. it a little bit of everything, pretty much. Yeah. Did you like the look of it? Oh, yeah, definitely. It looked like a T-Rex with the DNA of pretty much almost every dinosaur. Like, T-Rexes don't camouflage, mm -hmm. and it was able to camouflage. Yeah, that's true. I think that was because... T-Rexes of... can't speak to raptors, but they don't speak raptor. It could. Yeah, it was part raptor, it was part cuttlefish, and it was part tree frog, I think? Yeah. Yeah, so putting all those genes into one dinosaur, that was interesting. That, oh, was, yeah. that was a totally different uh, approach than the original, because the original was just... Now, imagine if they had mixed it also with the Mosasaurus. That's the one the, with oh, the water. The yeah, the Mosasaurus. Oh, that thing was yeah. awesome. That mixed with the Indominus Rex would probably be... Like an all-out killing machine, even more so than the Indominus Rex. Oh yeah, yeah. So it that was actually like an alligator. Yeah, that was one of the big highlights for me. Anyways, the Mosasaurus was awesome. Yeah, yeah, that was really, really cool. That was like one of the standout dinosaurs in the whole movie. Mm. So, yeah. but um, yeah, as far as plot and story goes, you know, Chris Pratt is called in, and Bryce Dallas Howard is called in, and they have to. Well, she works at the park. Yeah. He's called in, and, you know, this dinosaur escapes, and there's a buffet of people oh, yeah. just waiting to be uh, to be munched and on. Basically, they just have to stop this dinosaur before everything goes to shit. Yeah, basically. I mean, it's not, uh, like I said, it's not that complex. Um, I like the premise. I like that it's it's simple. 
Yeah. And I like that they brought kids in here into this one as well. I don't know if they were necessary per se, but I think they added something yeah. to the movie. Did you? Yeah. How'd you feel about the kids? I liked them. Yeah. They weren't that annoying. I mean, no. the kid. There were a couple kids, and I think the Lost World that were like. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the kids weren't a problem. Uh, did you like? Um, let's see. Did you like the fact that some of the original actors like returned in the movie? Like, um, uh, what was his name? The scientist who it was like responsible for creating all the dinosaurs yeah. in the first one. Yeah. That was interesting that they brought that back. Yeah. So you know he played a fairly pivotal role in this movie as well. Yeah. Um, I almost didn't recognize him, and I was like, "Oh, that's the guy from the original Jurassic Park." Yeah. So. Yeah, that was cool. I even liked all the references Jurassic World had to the original. I did, too. Some people complained about that. I thought it was clever. It wasn't, like, to the point where you're like, oh, yeah, you remember this original? You know, they weren't, like, they weren't, um... They weren't too obvious about it. Right, they weren't advertising, you know. Yeah, yes. this is a sequel to one of those great films. But I, I liked how they had things little, you know, popped up, like the shirt he was wearing mm -hmm. um, and the goggles. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. Actually, the whole, when they find the whole little area, the kids do, yeah. um, in the old Jeeps, Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, so I like the nods to the original as well as the movie trying to be its own thing as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, the CGI, uh, which we'll, we'll CGI get into more was great. In, into special effects. Yeah, it was. I was surprised. You know, I think they used animatronics as well as CGI. Yeah. And I have to say, they um, I don't know if they were on par with the original, but they were good. Mm. So that was that was absolutely a, a high point in the movie. Yeah. That, that's more for special effects, but um, I just thought it was worth mm. mentioning. So, uh, Getting right into acting, we have Chris Pratt, we have Bryce Dallas Howard. Um, we have some other supporting roles, like, uh, geez. Bunch of other stars that I don't even know. I think, um, uh, yeah, I can't remember all the names, but mainly it's Bryce Dallas Howard, Nick and Chris Pratt, and Chris Pratt, and then the two kids, Nick Robinson. Yeah. And, um, Ty, what was his name? Uh, Die? No, no, it was the, the one that uh, played the younger, um, the younger kid, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, so those are the four main characters. And then we've got Vincent D'Onofrio mm -hmm. as the overall bad guy. Yeah. Um, let's start with Chris Pratt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he sold. I like Chris Pratt. I liked him, too. I loved him in Guardians of the Galaxy. Same here. Oh, man. So, so coming off of that big of a movie and then going into an equally big movie in a different yeah. way. I think it was, um, I think he did a really good job. Yeah. He was funny when he needed to be, and he was also, um, you know, tough and, uh, uh, you know, a good, a good leader at the same mm. time. So, uh, yeah, Chris Pratt was good. Uh, I liked him. He's probably another one of the highlights of the movie. Yeah. I think, definitely. I think he really, him being the lead character gave the movie more, um, you know, for to function mm. and so Bryce Dallas Howard oh yeah I liked her in the beginning I was like is she going to be the straight up person who's just you know she's very by the book and she's all like very to the point and, you know yeah yeah like I'm starting to see a stereotype with her character but you know throughout the movie she actually well she loses more clothing yeah and she but not becomes, much that's true but I just thought, thought that was funny yeah. and she um she becomes more independent, and you know this this fierce woman. However, I wish she lost the heels. Oh yeah, the scene. Yeah, I do kind of wish she had lost yeah. the heels. It was a cool scene, though. I mean, that whole we'll get to that later. But that whole scene that you know that I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. oh man, I, my my jaw was like down at that point. Mm -hmm. So, uh, are the kids? We already kind of talked about the kids. Pretty much, they're fine. Um, you know, not stereotypical, but usual. Older brother that is not necessarily a great sibling. He's always staring at the hot chicks. Right, and not necessarily supporting his younger brother because he's there yeah. too far away in age. Uh, and the young kid being this adventurous, you know, curious character, mm. kind of like Joseph Mazzello's character in uh, the yeah. original. Oh, he was. Both little kids are pretty curious at that age. Yeah, I think he's a little older than that. Gray, the character of Gray, was a little older, mm. but still. But not annoying. They weren't that annoying. No. No. So I liked that where Colin Trevorrow um, didn't, you know, add characteristics to them that 
made you want to go back with Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas, uh, oh, yeah. Howard Story. I how'd you feel about them going back and forth from those two to the kids and what's going on with them? I didn't mind it. Yeah, I I think the storyline between Howard and Pratt was more interesting. Yeah. But the fact that the kids were in there, I wasn't, like, I was okay with it. Yeah. It was fine. And they had a lot of screen time as well. So yeah. I think they got, uh, you know, equal screen time. Mm. So uh, the only person really worth mentioning as far as, you know, big characters yeah. is Vincent D'Onofrio as the um, stereotypical bad guy. Yeah. I want to hear your thoughts first because I'm not really... Um, Personally, I thought Vincent was kind of a douche. Yeah, well, yeah, he's supposed to play a douche. I think uh, uh, he's supposed to be that person, you know, I want to... Um... No, but I mean, like, other villains, they're not, like, douchey. They're just, like, evil. Oh, you kind of, you didn't really feel like his villainy was really felt. It was like, he's kind of, yeah, he's this, he's trying to be a bad guy, but he's, yeah. you know... But he's more like just being a meanie. You know? So kind of like a bully. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, but that, that shot where... Pratt was able to, like, punch him right in the face. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, actually, the whole story with uh, Pratt's character and the Raptors, mm. that was cool. Oh, yeah. That was cool. And the Raptors looked good. I'd like to point out that the Raptors looked better in Jurassic World than they did oh, yeah. um, Jurassic Park 3. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, especially the scene where Chris Pratt was trying to help someone, like, escape from the Raptors, and then he escapes from the Raptors. Oh, yeah, that whole scene was really tense. It was like, yeah. oh, God, I was, like, holding my breath because they were, that was such an intense scene. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah Vincent D'Onofrio. Uh, I didn't, he was just this stereotypical bad guy trying to be, you know, really, really bad, yeah. but I never really bought it as him. Mm. He's a good actor. I just think they could have done more with his character. Oh, yeah. And I was fine when he bit the bullet at the end of the movie, you know? Yeah. Just like, ah, he's, you know, blood on the wall and everything. So, um, I was okay when he just bit the bullet. Yeah. Um, that's about all for acting, really. Yeah. Um, everyone did a, a good job. D'Onofrio was fine. I think they just could have given his character more of a story and more of a motivation. Mm. You know? He was just, he was kind of, a lot of these, the characters, supporting characters in this movie were kind of like cookie cut and they didn't have many layers to them. Well, they really didn't have any stories to them. They were basically just, like, either workers or people at the park. Yeah, well, one-dimensional, right? Yeah. Yeah, they, there were a lot of one-dimensional characters besides the uh, main, you know, key four characters. Yeah. So that could have been a little more fleshed out as far as supporting characters, but I guess mm. it didn't um, It didn't take away from my overall enjoyment of the film. Yeah. So... Um, that's all I think I have to say on acting. Anything else you want to talk about? Um, nothing really. Okay, so let's, um, um talking about uh, special effects and action now, yeah. uh, your thoughts. I thought the movie was pretty action-packed, actually. And were you, did it keep you engaged oh, throughout yeah. the whole, it did? Like, okay. I thought for sure the Indominus Rex was going to win because it took down the T-Rex and the, uh, the Raptor. Oh, man. And then the Mosasaurus just came out of nowhere. Yeah, I know. That whole climax where the raptors are fighting the Indominus Rex and the T-Rex comes out. When I saw the T-Rex in, like, the dark, um, you know, of the door where yeah. she is and she lights the flare, I was like, oh, can it be? Can it be? And yeah. then it comes out. I was like, oh, it's the T-Rex! Which was awesome because this movie kind of fixes what they, um, what they uh, did in number three. Yeah. You remember how the Spinosaurus killed the T-Rex? Yeah. In the third one, I was like, no, you don't kill a T-Rex. The no. T-Rex is awesome. So I liked that they kind of put that aside and they were like, no, this is, you know, we're not going to worry about what happened in three. Here's the T-Rex yeah. again. Let's have him fight. Oh, yeah. And that was that was cool. And the whole uh, the whole thing with the raptors, too, like them trying to find the Indominus Rex and then them being turned on yeah. back, back to... Pratt's character was like, oh boy, he's on, he's on their side now. So, yeah. um, but that was that was cool. The, yeah, the action was handled very well. It wasn't there was no shaky cam. I do not like shaky cam. Yeah. Um, it was it was very pristine as a way that the shots were uh, created, and I think mm -hmm. the action was. Um, it the movie wasn't too um, 
Too heavy action with, packed. Too heavy with action. Yeah. When a movie can get so action packed that it loses its focus, it can get kind of boring. Either get get boring or you just like you don't. It's not very believable. Yeah. So, the fact that they had story as well as action, um, I liked that. Yeah. So, but uh, overall CGI good. I like that they use animatronics and um, special effects. I think they used both yeah. for the dinosaurs. So some for others. You know that model when Pratt, uh, that long neck or whatever yeah. that's dead on the ground. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was kind of a callback to the tri, uh, sorry, to the um, triceratops triceratops scene in the original. Yeah, yeah, so that was cool. I like that. Um, but yeah, I the other thing I wanted to touch on before we move into music is the tension of this movie. Oh yeah, that there there were some scenes that I was just like, I was on the edge of my seat, and you know, there's very few films these days that can actually do that yeah. to me. You know. Um, but if you let it, it's like, oh, you, yeah. you're like, you're grabbing your seat and until the actual, um, action happens, you're just, you can't bear it much longer. Yeah. So that was, After I feel as though most of the intent, the tension was involved with the Adominus Rex. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's where the tension was. I mean, I don't think there was tension in any other scenes. Right? Yeah. Like when they were like. Figuring out newer and more information about it, that's when I really like, I felt the tension in it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was like because that's like one more disadvantage, right? And you're you're finding out more about this, and the fact that the Indominus Rex was a highly intelligent animal yeah. as well. She was picking people off left and right, and she was, uh, you know, killing for sport when she was killing on long necks. It was like this thing is seriously dangerous. Mm. Um. And the ex explanation about her being um, finally coming into the outside world because she had only she had been raised in a yeah. cage, and then eating the sibling. Oh yeah, yeah. So that it, that really built upon the tension of this thing. You do not want to get come you know five inches near this thing. Yeah. So, anyways, that was yeah. The tension was with the Indominus Rex. Yeah. Uh, let's see, music music wise in this movie. Um, hearing the Jurassic Park theme again, yeah, uh, I, that was pretty nostalgic for me. What about you? Um, I liked it too. I like that they put it. And they they kind of did a little, not a remix, but they kind of did like a re-recording of it. Yeah. To make it sound a little more um, more current. Right. Exactly. Yeah. More current. Um, and wow, I, I just I loved the theme. Overall, there wasn't a whole lot of music in the movie. Yeah. But when it was there, I felt like it added to the overall like awe of what you're seeing on screen. Yeah. I don't know. What did, is there anything else you wanted to say about that? Nah. No? Not so sure. music was good. I don't remember who composed the music. John Williams. Oh, God, right. Duh. How could I forget John Williams? One of the best composers. Yeah. You know, Star Wars, Jaws. Home Alone. And Home Alone. Yeah. <laughs> I totally forgot about Home Alone. Yeah. Um, he's a great... He's like and Indiana mind. Jones, I believe. Yeah, Indiana Jones, too. Yeah. He's like one of he's in the top five com favorite composers of mine. Oh yeah, yeah, maybe even number one. I mean, mm. he's like up there with Hans Zimmer, mm. and Hans Zimmer is great. Yeah. So, um, I think that's all that I wanted to cover with music. That's they're not there's nothing else really to talk about with the music. It's mm. there. It serves a purpose, yeah. and it, it was it was very nostalgic at parts. Mm. Uh, overall, um, as we know, as you guys know, we go by a 1 to 10 rating scale. You cannot do decimals, so you can't have like a 5.7 or an 8.6. Not even a 3.14? <laughs> no, no, you have to have a solid number out of 10. All right. um, what would you rate Jurassic World? I'd give it an 8. An 8 out of yeah. 10? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. A five out of ten is um, is like average on yeah. the, on the sh on the show. So an eight is pretty exceptional, I'd say. Yeah, it's good. Um, I'd probably go seven. I think I'd go a seven, seven. out of ten. Yeah, yeah, because um, some parts were a little slow. Some parts could have been act not acted better, but could have been um, fleshed out a little more. Yeah. But overall, I'm excited for the sequel that's mm. you know being planned. Um, and it was a pretty awesome time at the theater. Oh, yeah. So, Definitely. So, yeah, I'd give it a 7, mm. seven out of 10. So, 8 out of 10 for you. Yep. 7 out of 10 for me. On um, average, it's a 7.5 out of 10, yeah. 
Yeah, well, if you were if you were to have a seven point five, you yeah. had seven. So yeah, you, yeah, you had eight. Which is kind of similar to Rotten Tomatoes rating, which is like seventy one, I believe. Yeah, and it's fresh. Yeah. You know, is that I don't remember if that's certified fresh. Yeah, I think seventy five later, but that's yeah. it's getting off the point. So um, eight out of ten from Jake, seven out of ten from me. That is uh, Jurassic World. Um, it was a really good time at the theater, and I think we both enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, you know, it's definitely the best uh, Jurassic Park sequel. Mm -hmm. So that's how we're gonna wrap it up. Yep. Um, join us next time when we review God knows what, um, and maybe Jake will join me again. Yeah. And uh, until then, stay tuned for the next episode of Rock Movie Reviews. Yep. Peace out, guys.